going to bring Fred to our organization. Earlier this year, we had uh, a session much like this uh, that was focused uh, completely on uh, mobile enterprise and mobile computing. And we asked her to talk a bit about uh, what the future would look like. And she literally showed us what it would look like uh, in terms of new kinds of applications, interfaces, uh, and so on. I think uh, I'm probably getting it slightly wrong, but one of my favorites was, I think, technology uh, that would uh, give you a Twitter message when it was time to water your plants. So uh, if you're talking about leading edge, uh, Sarah, that was very much on, on the cusp of that. Uh, he, she's here today to share with us some research uh, that she's been conducting as part of her role as the founding chair of the Mobile Experience Innovation Center. So a follow-up to what we've been talking about on leadership. Just another busy day in the life of the president of OCAD University, Dr. Sarah Dutton. as we undertake this study. And, um, uh, whoops. Oh, there we go. So uh, the study is based on the question, uh, how do Ontario residents imagine their needs, home, social, and work in ways that can be facilitated through a mobile world? How can we um, understand their current behaviors, and how can we facilitate the next generation of those behaviors? And what actions must industry, government, and academia take to enable mobile residents? So um, this study is funded by the uh, Ministry of Research and Innovation. It brings together researchers uh, from the University of Toronto, Ryerson, and Oakhead University. Um, also very much a group of industry experts. And um, what I wanted to do today is to begin a little bit um, of sharing of some of what we're finding as we go out and we look both at the literature, uh, TRA, uh, Toronto Regional Research um, Authority helped us uh, to gather a kind of very thorough literature review of both Canada and comparative districts and what we're hearing and seeing from surveys and then also our researchers looking at what the potential is. So when we think about mobility, um, we think about it as being um, essentially about uh, the individual and not the device. And the idea that residents of Ontario require and desire connectivity services and content that link them to their daily activities and interests. So this notion of continuous or ubiquitous connectivity, it is technology enabled, but it is not only about the technology. Um, if we look a little bit at um, mobile penetration, subscriptions per 100 people, you can see that um, Ontario, and we use kind of comparative both um, developing world comparators and also um, uh, regions sort of similar to ours, countries similar to ours in demo demographics, the presence of a large technology company, for example. We have RIM here. Um, Sweden clearly has Sony Ericsson. Finland um, has Nokia. We see that we're still quite low uh, in terms of mobile uh, broadband and mobile penetration. So lots of opportunities here to, uh, to grow capacity. Um, when we look at the ecosystem, uh, what we're looking at here is really, and, and sorry for the fuzziness, some of this is just pulled right off of our surveys because we're still very much in process. But you know, this is sort of, this is the environment that allows and enables um, an ecosystem to develop. And frankly, Ontario has um, got quite a rich um, ecosystem. As we uh, look at um, sort of what's here, a little bit of pulling this out, the layers are enablers, people who supply infrastructure, support services, etc., and producers create uh, applications, content, messaging services, etc. So um, Ontario certainly has some capacity there. This is very hard for you to see. I'll tell you who we talk to. Um, application providers, solution providers, content producers, people developing all kinds of online material and direct to consumer capacity. Um, and what we heard from them in terms of their challenges and hopes, and sorry, this is right off of the data, um, but I will interpret it for you. It's a period of growth in Ontario. Everybody sees growth ahead of them despite the, re the recession. I can't underscore that enough. Um, they're in desperate need of skills. Uh, they need a connection with researchers, um, and they really need to connect with talent both emerging talent and uh, also um, interns from our universities and colleges. When they look at entry-level talent, their biggest concerns are work ethic, technical skills, business skills, time management, people skills, and their general availability and their literacy. 
for experienced talent, and there is a crunch here in terms of experienced talent. People who uh, may have the engineering knowledge from one domain but need to translate it into another. Technical proficiency, familiarity with current tools, availability again comes up very big. The soft skills, the creative skills, and meeting deadlines. So um, when we look at where their money comes from right now, it's uh, their own dollars, friends and family, tax credits, financing, university or college partners, options, loans, angel capital and research funds, and their sales, interestingly, are direct and licensing. Uh, the majority of companies that are successful here have significant export sales, which is a big signifier to us that we really need to help and support the ability to really access that, um, that those external markets. Um, we know there is an objective limit to the Canadian marketplace. We just heard the issue around data rates um, and what Canadian consumers will pick up. So they really need both a healthy local market, but they really need that international access. Um, when, when we looked at um, this question, taking Ontario Mobile, we are looking at a kind of overall set of um, recommendations to government, to industry, to the university and college sector. We did focus on four sectors that we thought were particularly significant in terms of capacity building. Um, and part of what we're trying to do with this is to really, you know, model concrete and reasonable recommendations to all sectors and also really kind of try and help government to think forward um, where it wants to move with, with, um, with its understanding of um, basically policy that um, is not really uh, heavily um, reliant on additional investment but could be leveraged through all kinds of tax credits and, and policy pieces. Um, so when we look at the general benefits, uh, without question, there's both significant time saving and productivity gains and general benefits in terms of how people manage their lives and the kind of productivity in their lives. I think when we look at this extreme uh, growth of productivity, very relevant to the previous conversation, frankly, about the need to really increase our capacity in Canada to use technology in appropriate ways in our businesses, um, we also have to think about the social and cultural impacts that mobile produces that may need to be addressed because of the intensification of labor. So um, those of us who live on our Blackberries or other mobile devices certainly can attest to that intensification. Um, our capacity um, as a percentage of Canada's um, really significant presence here in this province um, uh, and actually in the GTA of companies, labor force, patents, and academic capacity. So we're really poised to be the leader here and should really carefully manage this situation, um, really looking at how we can have a broader um, sort of impact. We also have to manage the situation with RIM and its future because the loss of RIM, um, like with Nortel, could have a kind of hollowing out effect. Um, if we look at patents, which are the traditional measure of uh, innovation, um, and we know there's other ways to look at innovation capacity, we can see that there's a significant number of patents here. About 50% of those patents um, really um, do come from RIM, so again, um, we, we need to be aware of the impact if, if RIM goes south or otherwise, and we certainly hope it doesn't. Um, and then we can see where um, Canada sits within um, uh, global patents here. So, um, you know, we have some real capacity here. I want to move very quickly through education specific to mobile. We're the province with the most Canada research chairs for mobile related research. 18 of them are located in the province. University of Waterloo is uh, clearly a very whole strong nexus with the most CRC seats in the field and five um, appointed experts with six globally in the number of mobile related publications. Um, and you can see also strength at University of Toronto uh, and um, uh, really strong design strength here in the province in terms of the, um, the, the consumer facing, the user facing capacity here. I'm going to start moving through some of what we found in terms of um, uh, and learning recommendations here. Um, so um, in looking at the definition, we've been looking at K to 12, um, actually junior current kindergarten to 12, post-secondary education, corporate training, and informal learning. And we've had a, a number of roundtables with experts as well as our surveys that are still underway. And we look at um, learning, the benefits are the integration of mobility, the uh, continuous learning, which is you know 24 seven learning, lifelong learning and training, Formal and informal learning being combined, being able to bring learning in and out of the classroom, it being collaborative and individual, 
the ways that learning can be facilitated by technology. And what's really important around mobile is that mobile gives you context, it gives you personalized experience, these are the great strengths, and it's both very individual and it's highly social. So if you put those together, you know, that's really an amazing platform for a lot of um, how we're seeing that the future capacities of mobile is location aware, which is very exciting as well. So some of the benefits, and here we're looking at studies, we're talking you know, to people in the field. Um, we have definitely seen that K-12, to um, the introduction of mobility in elegant ways teaches self-motivation um, on the part of student students. Um, we've seen some studies now, the Canadian Council on Learning is looking at um, the impact of introducing um, mobile experience because it is so much about personalization and just-in-time learning, um, and it looks like it's impacting high school dropout rates, which is an incredibly important thing for us in this province. We have significant high, high school dropout rates, and they're very costly. Um, the post-secondary education, um, and also we're seeing reported uh, increased learner engagement. The curriculum in Ontario can be managed using a device bridge, but also a mobile experience which context. Um, some of the school boards like York um, are doing fantastic work where they're um, encouraging students to bring in their mobile devices, but they're also providing mobile devices. So they're kind of balancing that so it doesn't become a kind of equity question in the classroom. And um, they see much more collaboration among students much more independently driven learning at the same time. So that great balance of self-reliance and, and collaboration. And within the post-secondary system, there's some um, really interesting opportunities here to engage um, in, in uh, you know, students in these large sort of legendary classrooms of 1,000 or 2,000 students in Psychology One. Um, the University of Toronto has introduced mobile experience into that process um, using tutors and mobile devices, and they've seen um, you know, increase in, in student engagement and NESI scores, which um, measure engagement. So we're very much looking at the ways that mobility can enhance learning and also can provide some other kinds of benefits at the same time. And all levels report 24-7 learning activity, which is exactly um, what we want to see. The vision of M-learning, uh, students will be able to learn continuously, they'll learn in different environments, you know, as technology rolls out for tagging, location-aware applications. There's some great examples out there on the market, um, like the War of 1812 by PBS. Um, very much check that one out. It's um, a multi-located um, game and learning experience um, on the actual battlefield. And of course, the social learning benefits are great. Um, there's lots of policy work that has to be done in this space. Um, the kind of state of current textbook policy, taxation models, um, mismatches between uh, you know the industry and uh, what the uh, sort of demand is that can be sorted out in part um, through the ways that M learning is support. So, um, in terms of the M health environment, um, mobile and this is something we really want to underscore. It's the ideal platform to enable a move from acute focused care to community and preventative care, which has to be the major goal in reforming reforming healthcare delivery you know, in Canada and um, in this province. So um, mobile devices enable, um, you know, all kinds of capacities um, in terms of both direct communication between uh, the well and the ill, uh, you know, with their caregivers, home care, monitoring, um, intervention that's just in time, all of which can really be designed to, um, to really roll out self-care programs and enable the individual to take responsibility for their care and their monitoring. It allows instant feedback and um, data gathering. Now, on that question, you know, a mobile healthcare environment has to be um, placed on top of um, an e-health system that's functioning. And you know, we know there's been lots of challenges. You know, behind the scenes, government is really trying to sort this out. And without any question. We need to have our records and our data available, you know, in um, an electronic format, and we need these systems in order to move forward to a healthcare environment that's both cost-effective and also very much about much better care for people. And in jurisdictions like the U.S., um, where we have seen, you know, the inclusion of technology and in health um, and lots of applications in Europe as well, there have been both productivity benefits and um, also healthcare benefits. So. Our vision for M Health, um, we see it as being part of the M Wallet, uh, geolocation information, 
trusted health information and cloud-based system, and the ability to manage health traffic to clinics and emergency rooms can be really effective in reducing wait times and um, health and wellness coaching and information for preventative care. These are some of the near vision things that we see. You know, some of the challenges have to do with the amount of data that will be collected, who owns that data, what are the privacy issues, um, how do we, as um, a jurisdiction, how can we be competitive in a world that's now being flooded with mobile healthcare applications and online applications when we're kind of really behind in our own local context around testing and delivering that environment. So some of the questions uh, that are relevant for us to sort out here, to sort out here, and entertainment, um, the use of mobile devices for culture and entertainment and life enhancement, and um, without question within the cultural industries, mobile is now part of um, a multi-screen program or, or any project that's being um, rolled out, both in terms of looking at what brands are doing, where advertising dollars are flowing, and the way that we're seeing product being created. So mobile is there in that kind of integrated sense within cultural industries. There's also a great set of opportunities for mobile-specific kinds of entertainment. Um, we see the benefits certainly in the gaming industry, the growth of casual games, which is very significant, and um, the flow of dollars within those industries into mobile development, um, the use of mobile for tourism, and all kinds of other sorts of enhancement. And so we also see um, the gamification of some kinds, some parts of the learning environment um, in good ways that kind of intensify student involvement, that again, mobile is a great um, technology there. So our vision for um, M Entertainment, um, we're seeing it as an offering platform, re re replacing the computer for design and dissemination. Uh, and we, when we talk at mobile, about mobile, by the way, um, you know, we're, we're looking across both small devices and, and larger devices. So we're certainly looking at um, your uh, playbook, you know, your iPod, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and the take up there. Um, the growth of social media, which again is you know, one of the strengths of um, the learning environment and personalization. So just gonna move um, here quickly into some of the challenges. Uh, we have a very fairly stable content producing environment in Ontario. Um, the application developer environment definitely has the pull south um, and into other regions of the world. So we need to be able to motivate them to stay here. Um, and I'm just gonna move into my last, uh, I know I've got about two minutes left, um, so just talking about the, the fourth tier, which is M-Commerce. So in a narrow sense, um, it refers to transactions and purchases via mobile devices, but we're looking at a, a very near future that includes in use, um, uh, the in-store use of mobile devices, uh, location-based marketing, the ability to create um, you know, an environment of pull and push, again, because of personalization um, on the part of consumers. Um, this is some of what we heard back around M Wallet interest. Um, there is M Wallet interest growing here in, in Ontario. Um, you can see where it is, and the benefits are convenience for the consumer, the paperless ticketing for events and travel, and increased sales and consumer reach. Um, the challenges are changing consumer behavior and uh, the need for infrastructure. So the M Wallet requires the finance industries. ISPs um, and brands to work very closely together, and also how to um, deal with the appropriate regulatory and privacy policies. Um, okay, so these are some of our action areas. Um, I think um, um, we're well set through this research, hopefully, to be able to look at both recommendations for government and industry, um, and um, we're hopefully going to be back to you to um, talk about those recommendations um, maybe uh, next year and, and see what kind of input that you'll have, in fact, in enabling them as we have a final report. And Technicity will help us to, um, to distribute that report, both in, in paper form and also electronic form. So these are just some of the action areas that we see as we move forward, you know, the need for a venture environment that can look at the kind of complexity between technology applications and content, for example. Um, and we're recommending that M Commerce action focus on transportation, government services, and um, um, creating extended partnerships between the successful verticals right now in the mobile industry. So um, I'm going to end there because um, I think I've just uh, managed to whip through about 40 minutes and 20. And I don't know if we have time, time for questions. Uh, fortunately not. So the real art, uh, I think, is trying to get through, there's actually 42 slides in 15 minutes. 
Uh, so and I'm really sorry that we uh, don't have questions for this session because I'm sure there are lots. We want to give people an opportunity to have a bit of a break, uh, to network uh, and everything else. But uh, you know, it really uh, stinks to be uh, the timekeeper for something like this, especially uh, with somebody uh, like Sarah Diamond, who uh, I have uh, interviewed um, you know, years ago and have watched over the years uh, how much you give back to your own industry, uh, to this industry, and to the city. So Sarah, we are extremely proud to work with you. Thank you so much for your time today.